And we're back for another Gab with Abigail. If you aren't back and this is your first time on my channel, hi, welcome to Gabs with Abigail, where we talk about the Bates and Duggars and other D-list fundies. Today's a little bit of a, a smorgasbord, if you will, because we're going to be catching up with the D-list fundy, talking about an A-list fundy. We are today reading Pastor David Waller's letter on requesting to the judge leniency for his brother-in-law Joshua Duggar so for those of you who don't know and you can also just go watch my videos about the Wallers David Waller is married to Anna's older sister Priscilla and they're pretty close and not as they are still deep deep within the IBLP fundamentalist lifestyle and how I would describe David, um, just very, 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 very deep into the Kool-Aid. If it were possible, I want to say that he is basically Bill Gothard's like left ass cheek would be the best way that I could describe who he is. There are several episodes on 19 Kids and Counting featuring David, again, because he was very up there in terms of IBLP being one of Bill Gothard's like favorites, you know, really close with and up there in the organization. So let's get into it. Dear Judge Timothy L. Brooks, as the senior pastor of Fair Park Baptist Church and as the brother-in-law to Joshua Duggar, I would like you to know that I have met and talked and prayed with Joshua Duggar, his precious wife, Anna Duggar, and each of their children for many hours. I believe that you should carefully consider the many factors that affect the discretion you retain in your power as you set the sentence for Joshua Duggar. There are many factors, those children being at least seven, right? Joshua Duggar is a friend and my brother-in-law for the past 10 years. We've spent a considerable amount of time together through family holidays, vacations, working together, and doing projects to help and serve needy people. Here are a few examples. It was Joshua Duggar who offered to help me finish a large deck project for our in-laws, giving of his time and money during Christmas week to complete a large deck with a handicap accessible ramp. It was his generosity and personal initiative that designed the cable railing system for the deck to keep everyone safe and allow wheelchair access to the Keller family's double wide trailer home. It was the next year that it was Joshua Duggar's generosity and kindness that purchased and installed new appliances for his in-laws. It was Joshua Duggar that sponsored an automatic gate closer for the entrance to their home. It was Joshua Duggar's kindness and generosity that has allowed me to purchase vehicles at his cost, including a Honda Pilot that my wife and I enjoy driving for a number of years as our family vehicle. So he did nice things. He he bought you guys off, basically. Out of his kindness and generosity, he gave you a couple gifts. Now we're all supposed to be like, ah, go to prison for only five years, babe. It was Joshua Duggar that went out and spent several hundred dollars to decorate and organize our laundry room to make it efficient and beautiful. It was Joshua Duggar who personally donated 2000 a month for the past number of years to support a struggling and needy widow raising her children. Damn, how much money y'all have? You can give $2,000 a month to a struggling widow. Sponsor me. Anna's gonna be fine in prison, sounds like then. Y'all had $2,000 to just be giving out each month to this lady. How much money were y'all making from this car lot? I wanna know it. Whenever I hear this kind of stuff, like, is this like a money laundering scheme? Is this how he's hiding his money? It was Joshua who has poured out his heart to his wife and children with special effort, love, and care to serve them. Like I, I'm, 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 hold on, I'm stuck on this. Is, you think this is a money laundering business because where are you just getting this money from? Like, is a commercial car business this successful? Like, should I go to Taunt Town, <laughs> Taunt to Town, and open up a car lot? Like, hey, it's me, the only black car dealer in town. Get your car here. <laughs> That's too much. That's taking it too far, right? I just, I can't understand. I have to make a joke. I have to laugh because this is like so ridiculous. Like, 
He gave a bunch of presents. He gave some us gifts. And that's why, Judge, you shouldn't put him in prison. That's why he should only go for five years in my IMO, you know? It was Joshua Duggar who has poured out his heart to his wife and children with special effort to love, care, and serve them. Once, while my family and I were taking a road trip with Joshua Duggar and his family, I observed one of his children misbehaving. I listened as Joshua stopped the vehicle, took his little one aside privately, and lovingly and patiently talked with his child. I was in awe at the tone and love he, sh he showed. He loves his kid. Let's give him a fucking trophy. <laughs> the bar is in hell, okay? On a number of occasions, I have been in Joshua Duggar's home for an overnight visit. I have observed him gather his children and read to them the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, then pray and then have a beautiful time singing songs about Jesus while playing the piano. In Joshua Duggar's recent absence, I have enjoyed taking some of his boys to a Christian retreat for fathers and sons. I prayed with his boys while tucking them into bed. I have heard his young sons pray for you, Judge, by name, asking God to work in your heart so their daddy can be home soon. I have also heard them cry themselves to sleep, wanting their daddy to be home. I remember this past Christmas, their request, all I want for Christmas is my daddy. And you know who did that? And you know who did that? And you know who did that? Joshua Duggar. You know who put himself in prison? Joshua Duggar. You know whose fault that is? Joshua Duggar. You know whose responsibility and failing it was? It was Joshua Duggar, the man who you have watched Put the effort, the love, care to serve them. Like I feel, and I guess we're going to get into that a little bit more in this letter. I mean, yeah, they want him home. But you know who has to explain to them why he's not home? The liar who keeps lying and is going to lie and say he's not in jail for the reasons that everybody's saying that he's in jail for. I have personally observed Joshua Duggar being a man of integrity and take considerable loss after selling a vehicle to a friend of mine at his cost. When the transmission went out of the vehicle a few months later, he went above and beyond the call of duty and replaced the transmission free of charge, even though he lost over $1,000 to do so. So I'm saying, where is he getting all this money from? Is this not a small business? He's got a casual $24,000 to just be spending on this widowed wife. He's giving out free cars, free transmissions. He's redoing laundry rooms. So what's the truth? Let's see. I want to see Joshua's taxes. Michelle Duggar just told us that how diligent he is in filing those. I want to see it. Joshua Duggar is a deeply religious and God-fearing man. You can fear God and do bad things. You can fear God and do bad things. I know when I watch on a Sunday, I feel horrible inside. He lives his life knowing that he will give an account someday to God for the choices and decision he makes. He has publicly, and that's probably why he just keeps lying. You know what I mean? Because it's like, well, I can keep lying to you guys because at the end of the day, it's God that I have to answer to. Like, it's not you niggas. <laughs> it's not funny. He has publicly owned his mistakes and has been transparent about his faults even when he knows he will be misunderstood, maligned, and attacked. He has also chosen not to own something he claims he has not done. So he's a liar, is what you're saying. Because personally, if I looked at, I don't even want to say it, but C-S-A-M, no, I wouldn't admit that because there's absolutely no way for that not to be under, like, of course it's going to be, like, there's no way for that to not be misunderstood, maligned, have you maligned and attacked because that's a terrible thing to do. But here's the thing, right? He has also chosen not to own something he claims to have not done. So he's claiming that he hasn't done it, right? We know that he hasn't admitted any kind of guilt, but that he's also not admitting any guilt to any of you guys. And just how disappointing that is. Because it's very clear from the language of Michelle Duggar's letter, from Anna Duggar's letter, from Mr. Waller, Pastor Waller's letter, that you guys would forgive him. So, and that who cares, right, if everybody else 
maligns, misunderstands, and mis and attacks and interprets that because you're going to set the tone and interpret that for and like and and forgive him. The most important people in his life are ready to forgive him. They're ready to continue to support him. There is no suggestion. There is no evidence that if Joshua were to say, yes, I did this, that you guys would not forgive him, would not keep supporting him. And I mean, would that put Anna maybe in a difficult position on what to do? Yes. But would the Duggars stop supporting him? No. But at this point, he is so deeply entrenched and embedded in this lie that he can't tell the truth, right? Because now that's probably where the biggest part of the disappointment is going to come from is the fact that you lied and you didn't tell the truth. When you know these people are going to forgive you, they believe in forgiveness in a way that we don't, right? This all-encompassing, you can't hold on to bitterness, they believe in forgiveness. I think that's the craziest thing about this. Like, if I'm Josh, I'm, I'm going to say if I'm Josh, I would never, I just, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even. But like, just tell the truth. And see what happens. What's the worst? And if they like get upset and whatever, I'm going on a national tour talking about, yeah, I grew up in this fucked up cult. And this is what it produced. My parents never got me the help when I needed it. And so now, yeah, I'm a big sicko. I just, it's its really crazy to me for them to act like it's impossible for somebody God-fearing to, to do bad things. For somebody God-fearing not to lie. He has a lot to lose, right? Because what if Anna does decide to leave? If he told the truth, what if she did decide to leave? What's left for him? Prison and nobody for support but his parents, who are only going to do, you know, what they can. But they have 18 other kids to worry about, about 10 of who are still living at home. Maybe more than that. I don't, have, I don't feel like thinking about it. So... There, it, 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 that's to me like what's crazy is that I think in their minds they're feeling like what, what does he have to lose what does he have to lie for of course we believe him and I just don't understand why like it's so weird to me that they think he's above lying he had a whole affair he used to go on television act like everything was hunky dory in his family and marriage he used to go home to his wife and do that and then that was a lie he used to do that as a child he did it as a young adult as a grown man. And so what is now different? And I, th I feel like that's what I want to know. Like, what between all of that? There's never this admission that, yes, Josh had this past. But here's how I've watched him change. Here's how I've watched him be different. And that's why when he tells me that he didn't do it, I believe him. And why I hope that you could give him leniency. We have had none of that. What is different about Joshua Duggar? Oh, I've known Josh for 10 years. His affair was less than 10 years ago. And you felt, you didn't feel like he was being duplicitous and lying to you and, and, and none of that? I sat through much of the trial and listened intently to the arguments made by both the defense and the prosecution. It was there when the verdict, I was there when the verdict was read. As a pastor who, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I sat through much of the trial and listened intently to the arguments made by both the defense and the prosecution. So when we say much of the trial, I want to know, did you sit through what they described as the material that they were witnessing? I'm going to look that up. I want to know if he was there that day at the trial when they were describing the material that was being viewed. You sat through that. You listened to that. And I'm sure, and if you did, I'm sure that it was so appalling to you that you thought, no, not this guy, that it was that disturbing, that it was that disgusting. And then to have to sit back and say, oh no, and be convinced and have someone tell you, like to live in that kind of denial that no, it can't be him, that you listen to both sides of the argument and still decided to believe that he's telling you the truth. I guess that's why they vote Republican and support Trump. As a pastor who cares about the spiritual condition of people, I urge you to consider how much his wife and seven children need him in their lives. To be nearby for visits, accessible for communication, and brought back home to provide not just the financial but spiritual guidance of his family. And so saying this, I have a lot to say about that sentence. First, I want to start off. Until I read this, I didn't think about the fact that he's going to federal prison and so that means that they could put him in a jail anywhere in the country 
and making it really difficult not for anybody to go and see him, depending on where they put him, that you're going to have to now take flights. Imagine having to get on a flight with seven of your children, one of whom is a newborn infant, not even a year old yet, right? This is what he signed you up for. This is what he did. This was his consequence. This was your... To say that he need him back to be a spiritual guider for spiritual guidance. Look what he's dragging her through spiritually. Is this guidance? To ask her to know misery, unhappiness. What did Anna do to deserve this as a husband in her young life except but to follow everything that you and your little cult leader buddy said, oh, this is so great. This is the best way to live. This is it, sis. You know? I just, I don't understand that. How you could look at Anna and think that she deserves this. Asking for leniency so that he can be brought home to his seven children. The fact that they keep bringing up these kids. This is your last sentence? Oh, to bring him back to his seven children. You're right, bro. Let's put him in jail for 10 years, at least, at minimum. At minimum. 12 since he didn't take the deal the first time, right? The evidence is so overwhelming, And to sit here and say, I'm going to choose his lies because he believes in God the way I believe in God, the same way that I do. Like, And when I say the same way, I mean quite literally the same formulaic pattern of how we decided that God works and should work and how the family should work, that I'm going to continue to believe his nonsense. Insane to me. Like, I just, it's really appalling. (laughs) It's really appalling. Like, David, it's appalling, sir. It's really appalling that you could be this deep in it that you can't think of those kids first, that they need, that you can't see through his bullshit. That's the crazy thing. And I don't know if it's because when you know somebody, it makes it more difficult because you you think you know them and they're on that bullshit, right? I just, there's such a pattern. Like, that's, that's, I think that's what gets me about these letters. I know I already said it, but I'm going to say it again, is that... Where is the pattern of difference? Where is the change? Tell us the change. We want to see it. You knew him. Y'all know him. What have you seen? Precisely give us the description of what's been different about his behavior. Anyways, that's going to be it for me for this video, guys. I promise I'm, I'm, so, I'm so close to being done with the Josh and Anna video. I can taste it. Like literally, I have a procedure I'm getting done on Friday, so I'm probably not going to be able to record it on that day, but I should be able to record it on Saturday. And it should be out, I want to say, next Wednesday. But, yeah, so we're tentatively waiting for this trial. I hope they throw the fucking book at him. If they could give him more than 20 years, give him more than 20 years. Give. I don't want any chance for leniency for him to get out for good behavior. I don't want him to have, like, parole. None of that. Lock him up. He has had every chance and every opportunity in life to do the right thing and has not and has stumbled in the worst way. Like, these aren't little things. These aren't indiscriminate. And let's look at his fucking taxes on some Trump shit. See you guys. It's like you niggas gotta stop acting.